Hey, Ace hey, Family! Hey, Ace hey, Family! God. Okay. My hair looks fucked up. I would not feel like this. So just go. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Hey, Ace hey, hey, Family! But you want to be able to be more personal. You want to be able to be more... Natural. Natural. Engaging. Exactly. So I had to kind of change that part of myself. Justin has gotten himself and the family in big trouble in the past. And it seems to happen over and over and over again. Some of you guys have asked what has happened with the Ace Club. In reality, like, you guys got scammed. He stole that from me. Austin from the Ace family stole my art. And he's like, okay, like, what are some of your ideas? So I gave him three ideas, completely ghosted me, and then like two days later, did the same exact video, title, thumbnail, everything. We need content, I mean, so. What in the whole grain, sugar-free audacity are these people thinking? Since the dawn of time, the Ace family has been at the center of some of the biggest controversies on the internet, throwing not just themselves in the crosshairs of scandal, but their children as well. Now, we can argue semantics about how the Ace family are just victims of their own making, how people change and the whole internet accountability thing is overrated and there's a moral lesson we could all learn from this, but instead, <coughs> Let's just be petty, because after all, this is Petty University and class is officially in session. And when it comes to alleged scam after scam, lawsuits, charity fraud, power abuse, manipulation, and general gaslighting of your audience for the sake of conning people out of their money while using your children to do it, someone's gotta call bullshit. So sit back, relax, and let's dive face first and balls deep into the age old question that yeah, the Ace family keeps getting away with this, but why? Austin was telling Bryce, telling Taylor, they didn't know any of the numbers. He was getting the numbers every day. And look who the director is. It's Austin McBroom. He's getting his five million guaranteed. Social gloves are bankrupt. Fighters did not get paid. Hey, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the family. Oh, hi there. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's my face again. Swoop. 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 Ah, swoop. Swoop, swoop. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, child. Okay, so let me let me get myself let me get myself properly dressed for the occasion. Okay, bitch. <laughs> All right, child, so I have been researching the Ace family for quite a while now and saw all of your requests that I cover them, and honestly, th these people are exhausting. Hey, Ace family! 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 Ew. Now, in all the research I've done uncovering their problematic issues from 2016 until now, there is so, so, so much like Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model season 23, bitch, you're doing too much at this point. I didn't feel that you embrace. Oh my God. Like, I was actually shocked at the sheer volume of problems, alleged scams, lawsuits, fraud accusations, and manipulation they have participated in. And like, that's just the parents. Like, that's not even touching all the issues of potential child exploitation, child labor laws, and the psychological impact all this could have on their kids when they get older. So I am gonna cover several issues, but it is impossible for me to dig into every single thing that they've done in one doc. Like, it would literally be three hours long, and trust me, no one should be subjected to the Ace family for three hours straight. <laughs> so instead, I was actually thinking of making this a two or three part series where I can break down in more detail every individual scam and lawsuit, especially on Austin, because that hoe is just a whole ass project, honey. So let me know in the comments if you want to see a series on this, as we're seeing so many rampant influencer scams on their audiences these days that I think are worth covering and like really important to dig into. We're gonna get into all of that, but first, y'all notice anything? Do do you see? Do you notice anything different? Different about me? The little just I'm just I'm just saying. I'm wondering if y'all notice. <laughs> Y'all, I am so freaking excited because Petty University Apparel is finally here! 
So this is the limited edition freshman collection, the very first launch. Y'all are my day ones, honey, yes. And y'all know that Professor Petty is put in the work for you, honey. You are going to love it all. So tiny backstory, I actually came up with Petty University like several years ago. Like I wrote the idea down and just kind of tucked it away. And this was like back when I wasn't nearly as outspoken as I am now, me and my big mouth, okay. Uh. And I was way more shy and reserved. And honestly, I felt like I just had not found my voice. So Petty University was like my own little escape in my head. This idea of like Professor Petty and like taking my thoughts to Petty University was kind of like my way of giving myself permission to finally speak my mind and like not let things get to me and take things so personally, if that makes sense. It was kind of like, well, let me be petty real quick, which is really code for let me stop hiding myself and finally step up and share what I have to say. Like, bitch, we got things to say and our voice is valid. Valid, and that's what this is all about. I don't know, it's almost kind of like petty empowerment. <laughs> And so naturally, I want to empower all of you because I know you got that petty side and it's time to tap into it. So there are four different items, two different designs with five different colorways, which I'm so stoked about. The mainstay central design of Petty University is the shield right here. And listen, like this is, this is our coat of armor against all the foolery in the world. So inside the shield, there is the P and the U for Petty University. And then there is a tea kettle, which I am just so in love with how this design came out. And then there is the tea cup with a little spilt tea because listen, bitch, sometimes, sometimes you can't be petty without spilling a little tea, okay? Let's just be honest. And then around the shields, we have the classic university laurels, them Harvard vibes, that Yale energy, but like without the price tag. <laughs> but what really makes these laurels so special, so y'all know in addition to these docs, I also make short films to like help uplift our community and support survivors and those dealing with mental health struggles. And so these laurels are actually inspired by the film festival laurels that my films have shown in because that was where I really found my voice. And I want to help encourage y'all to embrace yours, your voice, um, which is what makes this so special to me. So the hoodie and the crew neck sweaters, you can see here, have two different designs from each other. That way you can like mix and match items. Like if you want to get a hoodie and a sweater, you're going to have like different looking pieces. So on the top of all of the hoodies, it says the word petty and like classic university font and then at the bottom it says university and then there's the petty shield in the center and on the crew neck sweaters you have petty on the top and then you have a large petty shield in the center and then university down below which is wrapped in a banner right here and the t-shirt actually has the same design of the sweater but it is smaller and on the left so there are hoodies with five different colorways we have the hoodies in black dark heather which is a gorgeous charcoal gray color then we have a very light ash, a stunning neutral sand color, which gives you that Instagram baddie vibe, okay? She looking expansive. And for the pop of color in the collection, we have the stunning military green, which I am obsessed with. It is a beautiful olive color that will blend seamlessly into your wardrobe. And so then I did the same five colorways in the crew neck sweater sweatshirt. So there's the crew neck in black, also in dark heather, that same gorgeous dark gray. Then we have the beautiful sand color, which is honestly one of my personal favorites, as well as the sweater in ash and the same military green olive color. Now there are two t-shirts in the collection. I call these the uniform with one in the color heavy metal, which is a gorgeous dark gray charcoal color. And the other color is sand, which matches seamlessly with the sand hoodie and the sand sweater for those who like that tone on tone look. And these shirts are so soft and I love the versatility of the length. I wanted something long enough that you could comfortably wear over leggings or drape over your hips or booty, like if you like a little more coverage. But you can also easily tuck it in or tie it off at the waist to give you a cinched in look. And the hats. Woo! So there are three colors of the hats with the word petty embroidered on the front and the colors are vintage black, this one I'm wearing here. We also have a neutral ivory that is super cute like with all of the hoodies and sweaters and like gives you that tone on tone option. And for those who like a crisp white child, your head is blessed with petty white. Ah! Okay. Sorry. Oh, hi Pork. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Oh my gosh, we totally need to get Pork Chop a little petty hat. You want to? Okay, you want to play. You want to go play. All right, fine. I'm still getting you a hat. 
So the dad hats are premium elevated quality. They're not just like your basic hat. They have a cooling mesh on the inside, which uh, works to transmit heat and also helps to resist any stains. And they have a fully adjustable back strap with an antique buckle clasp. This is gonna allow you to get those micro adjustments to find your perfect fit. And yes, this is small and big head approved. Okay, I got you. I got a big ass head in all of this hair and I still have space on the strap. So it should fit your head just fine and like all my curly hair people as well. I got you, okay? I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about y'all big heads. And for the tops, you actually have a lot of versatility in how many sizes you can wear, depending on if you want a fitted or oversized look. Now, I personally like a looser fit, and for reference, I am about 5'8 and 150 pounds, and I got some boobs, honey, okay? So this is Kirby Cuban approved. So this is me in a size medium. Here I am in a large. This is me in an extra large, and here I am in a double XL, and we have larger and smaller sizes as well. And little things like as far as washing goes, they're all machine washable, and like with any graphic printed anything in your wardrobe, it's always recommended that you wash them inside out and hang dry if you can, but they are dryer safe. Uh, but that's what's gonna make it last for years and years to come. All right, I have talked enough about this, so y'all can just go ahead and pause this video right now. Don't be afraid, I will still be here when you come back and tap the link in the description to grab your official limited edition Petty University apparel because honey, you deserve it. And please be sure to share with me your cute Petty University outfits when you get your items so that I can post you on my Instagram and my Twitter and feature you in my upcoming docs. I am so looking forward to seeing your looks. And bonus points, these also make super cute gifts for the holidays next month. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And once again I just I want to thank you all once again for your absolutely amazing support not just in watching these docs but in allowing me the opportunity to even create this petty university line like it has been a long time dream of mine to create an apparel line and this just felt right like it felt right to finally make and share this with y'all so again I'm just I'm just saying you might want to pause the video right here tap the link in the description to go to petty university grab up the freshman collection petty university University, bitch, we have arrived. Yes! <laughs> so we ran into each other at a party. He hit me up and he like asked me some questions. Whew, okay, y'all didn't know you were coming to a swoop fashion show, did you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just really excited, okay? I've been working all this stuff forever and I haven't slept in days. <laughs> yes, I just wanted that. Like old school retro Harvard vibes, honey. Give it, give it, give it to me. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into this dumpster fire because that's what people do when they see dumpster fires, right? They just jump on in. It's all good, people. This is fine. This is totally fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> okay, so let's first break down the history of the Ace family. So Austin and Catherine McBroom first met, oh my gosh, wait. You know what? We should do the introduction like one of my true crime docs. Cause honey, some crimes have come a knocking and I just can't help myself. Okay, we extra petty today, Petty University. So let's cue some spooky music and an unnecessary narrator voice. So Austin McBroom is an American social, <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna try to get <laughs> through this. So Austin McBroom is an American social media personality who was born May 20th, 1992 in North Hollywood, California. Wait, hold, hold up, wait a second. You, you mean to tell me someone was actually born in Los Angeles? I mean, I'm kidding, but like I live in LA and it is such a rarity to find people who were actually born here. Okay, sidebar, no one cares, swoop. Okay, so Austin is 29 years old, but growing up he was an athlete who excelled mainly in basketball where he was a team leader in high school and went on to bounce around between three different colleges playing ball before meeting Catherine. Now Austin has a current reported net worth, well to be honest like it's all over the place, but reports say he's worth either two million or five million, but honestly after these scams and lawsuits I'm about to show y'all, if, if he's worth that, a bitch ain't gonna be worth that much longer, you know what I mean? It's just, it's inevitable, it's coming. And like, what did they call that? Oh yeah, consequences for your actions. We'll get to all of that. So Austin is one half of the parents that make up the Ace family, has three small children, has hosted numerous questionable charity events, has been accused of sexual assault, cheating, scamming, not paying employees, stealing artist work, tax evasion, business fraud, faking a break-in, misogynistic colorist tweets, and potentially exploiting his and other children for profit. So, you know. Really stellar stuff here. But you know, in all honesty, at least he has that hair. Look at my hair. 
No. Good thing I don't have to. No, I'm gonna say it. Good thing I have to be on camera today. Okay. God. Okay. My hair looks fucked up. I would not feel like this. So you know, it all kind of balances out, right? Okay, moving on to Catherine. Let me let me get a little more properly dressed here. So Catherine Paez, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Catherine was born Dolores Catherine Johnston Paez and was born on August 24th, 1990, so she's 31 years old, born in Montreal, Canada. Now she worked towards becoming a model and landed her first major contract with Victoria's Secret at 16 before then working in an ice cream shop and moving to China for a while, I believe, to teach English before moving to the United States. Now Catherine has an estimated net worth of $2 million and also has a lovely history of alleged scamming, tax evasion, fraud, staging an illegal business coup, faking a break-in, and potentially exploiting their children for profit. <laughs> you know what they say, birds of a feather and all that shit. So I should say that most everything I'm going to discuss while heavily researched and supported with as much court documents and witness statements as possible is technically all still just allegedly and not to be taken as fact. Allegedly. I'm just covering my ass here, okay? So anywho, uh, Austin and Catherine met in 2015 at a dinner event and according to them or like according to the cute little story they tell the camera Austin pursued Catherine but she was hesitant to date at first so they started dating and shortly after Catherine got pregnant and about a year into their relationship they had their first child L on May 28th 2016 and according to them like this whole parenting shit is just easy peasy what's the toughest part about being young parents Oh man, I don't think there is no tough part to be honest right? with you. I think it's all fun because we get to just act crazy. Well, especially me, I'm just a crazy person. By my, nature. My daughter, exactly, I'm just crazy. And my daughter, she just, I just, we just young and just like to, just to have we fun. Honestly now listen, I, I'm not a mom, but I feel like, I feel like this shit is hard as balls, dude. Like I remember when I was a kid, I was like a pain in the ass. So I feel like the people who say parenting is easy are like the kinds of people you don't want to be around at the holiday party because all they do is talk about themselves and their kids, like trophy achievements and judge anyone who's single or like having a tough time because if parenting is hard for you, then you must suck as a parent. <laughs> Or your kids suck. One of the two. Maybe both. And I mean, yeah, pushing a camera in your kids' faces who like don't have the ability to consent and filming their entire lives and posting it online for millions to watch all for the sake of making money off of your kids is easy, then yeah! Parenting is E-A-S-Y easy, bitch! I'm sorry, let's continue. So in July of 2016, about two months after Elle was born, they made their first YouTube channel together called Catherine and Austin Vlogs until they later renamed it to Ace Family, which the Ace stands for Austin, Catherine, and L. Now, the channel actually started out as one of those like couples pranks channels that were super popular back then. Like, bitch, this sh I just... So over the last few years, the Ace Family channel has grown to over 19 million subscribers, is one of the most lucrative channels of all time, and as of 2020, had an estimated net worth of $22 million. Wow, congrats. All right. I understand it wasn't in the contest just because we really wanted to give it away and I feel like he had a good shot. All right, child, we gonna get into some t-shirt vibes. With time for crimes, honey. Now, I know this entire episode is a class at Petty University, but bitch, let's roll that intro again. Petty University, class in session. <laughs> Put on your grad caps because class is in session and it is about to get wild. Ooh, she got that whole uniform look, okay. So like I said earlier, there are like a freakish amount of alleged scams and lawsuits surrounding this family and like too many to detail here, but let's, let's play a little game of I could, shall we? So I could point out how the Ace family has not one, but two alleged scams involving massive live influencer basketball events where they promise to donate some of the proceeds to charity, but then I'd have to explain how with their first event they promised to donate $100,000 to the Painted Turtle, an organization which I'm sure is wonderful, but that has employed Austin's father, Alan McBroom, for over 10 years and counting, which Austin did not disclose, but you know, he did manage to tweet this once about the organization. At the Painted Turtle camp, visiting the sick and unfortunate. Always a blessing to be able to give back. 
You know, it's just nothing like referring to children living with serious medical conditions as the sick and unfortunate. Aw, you poor unfortunate thing. I'm getting like Little Mermaid vibes right now. You poor unfortunate soul. Oh, and that $100,000 donation that Austin promised. Well, I could also point out how the prop check at the end of the game was only made out for $75,000. So there is a whole ass $25,000 that just poof, disappeared into, what, their pockets? I mean thin air. And by thin air, I mean their pockets. Allegedly. And he said that the best part about this event was everything was going to charity. And the winner of that game will receive a $100,000 check to donate to charity. And guys, that's the best part about this event, is to be able to give back. To us, there's nothing better in the world than to give back. But Austin and Catherine made way more money off this event than what they were giving to charity. You can see on the check, that the check only says 75,000. But you know, at least Austin had a snappy comeback to all the haters. And right, you guys said we made 400,000, but I just told you that the tickets, just for them, just for the tickets, they took about 100, over 100,000. That's that drops to 300,000 out quick. That's just the tickets. I didn't even really tell you how much the venue was because not one seat that was empty. They said they've never had that before. So not only was security expensive, but we had to add on extra security, right? Pay for, we, we had to pay for them to, to provide food for our ACE family members. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so where was I in our game of I Could? So I could mention how the Ace family launched an app called the Ace Club where they charge their fans $20 a month. $20, bitch. Like Netflix don't even have that kind of shame. But then I'd have to mention that they charged fans for exclusive content they never delivered. The app broke. People couldn't access it. For months they kept collecting money and they blamed someone else and literally said on camera that their fans got scammed. Some of you guys have asked what has happened with the Ace Club when we were doing exclusive content with the Ace Club. And unfortunately, the people that we partnered with in that adventure, um, they end up, I don't really like to talk negatively, but they just weren't good partners. Um, they end up unfortunately scamming us. Um, and it kind of like hurt us in a way because in reality, like you guys got scammed. Sorry, Cap's gonna have to go back on for this one. Bitch, we got scammed, you got scammed. Bitch, everybody got scammed. It's like Oprah, and you get a scam, and you get a scam, and you get a scam. I just, it's just kind of like Austin's like, okay, sorry, y'all got scammed, but pardon me while I take all of your money and run to the bank. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I could also point out how Catherine is being sued right now for 30 million dollars for allegedly staging a literal business coup. She's being sued by her own company for screwing them over. Like a coup, bitch. Like y'all got some time on your hands, okay? That's all I gotta say. Or how they've been accused of stealing video concepts from the Bram fam. Like, this guy hit me up to collab. We started texting and we were supposed to do a video together. And he's like, okay, like what are some of your ideas? So I gave him three ideas, very specific ideas. And he didn't reply to my text after that, like completely ghosted me. And then like two days later, did the same exact video idea that I gave him, title, thumbnail, everything. And when I saw that, I was like, that was pretty up like the fact that you reached out to me and at the time i like me and lois we had more subscribers than them we had more views than them like they weren't really known back then like nobody really knew them so i was just like like what was your intention on this like was your like I don't even think your intention was to collab. I think your intention was just, just to get like an idea off of us. I don't know what the hell your intention was because never got a text back. Like how Catherine used her to promote products but didn't return the favor when Bram Fam asked Catherine. Um, she like hit me up a while ago when her skincare line launched and she wanted to send me a PR package. And I said, of course, I put it on my story. And then I asked her if I can send her something from my new clothing store. I was like, I would love to send you and like the girl something. And she just didn't hit me back up but like other times i would dm her like she would reply back to me perfectly fine but then you wanted me to promote your product you know as a favor it's beneficial to you but then when i expect like the same support back like i couldn't get it or how austin bought a penis shaped lollipop for his wife's much younger sister who's a, a literal child what are you trying to get to lollipop. you love what you love show Catherine what you have in your hand show Catherine. show her 
She says a lollipop. And filmed the whole thing, put it on the internet, and then blamed the child for it when people called it out saying the child was going to steal it if he didn't buy it. I wish I was joking, y'all. Are you really making me buy this lollipop right now? You really want it? Yeah. Please, bro, put that in a bag right now. <laughs> Keep that in the bag forever. Do not show that to anybody, okay? okay. That's your little secret. Hey, <laughs> put that away. Put that lollipop away. I'm in so much trouble. But she said she's gonna steal it if I didn't buy it, so better me buy it. You know what? Listen, Austin, honey, listen, listen. Here, I'm gonna give you full so you can see everything. Come here. Save that trash for the streets. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now, I could also mention how they've been accused of not paying their employees, and Austin responded in typical baby bitch boy fashion. A lot of people gotta lie about us. A lot of people gotta lie about us. He was working for us for exposure, to grow his business, correct? And then once we got bigger, he randomly started asking for money. I hope Austin and Catherine just treat people that help them build with a little more respect and think less of themselves because it seems like the whole world is centered around you. Let me just mention the fact that every time you guys are talking about giving back, you're also talking about the profits you're going to make off. And of course, there's the Subify lawsuit, the Ahern lawsuit, the GC Lux lawsuit, the Taylor Holden lawsuit, the James Harden lawsuit, and the Social Gloves lawsuit. But y'all probably don't want to hear about that, right? We're just here for the general dumpster fire, right? Right? Girl, when I tell you that I am obsessed, I am obsessed with this color. I love, ooh, I love for fall, for fall and winter fashion. Are you kidding? Okay, okay, come through some olive tones. Yes. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna dig into some of the most recent scams slash scandals that have been all over the internet now. And the first one is the colossal catastrophe of this boxing event that happened a couple of months ago that now has a hundred million dollar lawsuit attached. So. Listen up, Petty University, class in session. Kyle, this one is just, it's too good to skim over, okay? Because this shit needs a broom and a dustpan to sweep all this mess up. And Austin McBroom, ah! Sorry, I had to. Okay, so long story short, and I'll cover this more in depth in the full Austin McBroom doc as part of the series, if y'all want to see that. But in June 2021, Austin ran yet another alleged scam where he was hosting an influencer boxing match. And it was a battle of the platforms match where it was YouTubers versus TikTokers. And Austin uh, was to fight TikTok fake dancer Bray Hall and agreed to pay Bryce $5 million to do the event. And we're making it to where it's his terms. He's getting his $5 million guaranteed. $5 million? Five million. I know, I probably shouldn't be saying some of this shit, but I'm just gonna say But like legit though, dead He's getting ass, his like five, $5 million. Get the $5 million check. What's the first thing you're gonna buy? My mama house. Now, they also agreed to place a bet for a bonus prize of $1 million to go to the winner that Austin got Bryce to agree to on camera. I'm not gonna lose. Like, I'm not. So, I'm if you're not gonna lose, put a million dollars up like me. All right, I'll do a million dollars just like you. You do a million dollars? Yes. You know, sidebar. <sighs> If you ever find yourself at an event where Keemstar is the moderator, run, bitch! Run for your life, bitch! Seriously though, I can't imagine a more prophetically disastrous dumpster fire in the making setup than Austin McBroom and Keemstar working together on something. <laughs> you played yourself. So the event had seven matches with Austin and Bryce's being the main event and also for some reason, fuck if I know, had musical performances by DJ Khaled. I mean, do we, do we call that music? And so Austin wins his match against Bryce, winning the million dollar prize, which would have been fine or whatever, but then we find out some more info on who exactly is running and profiting from this entire event. So it was put on by this company called Social Gloves, working together with LiveX Live, and lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, bitch, when you do a little digging to see who owns Social Gloves, it's a company called Ace Hat Collection Inc. And swoop, you might ask, who owns Ace Hat Collection Inc.? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll give you one guess. It starts with Austin and rhymes with McBroom. Oh, and Catherine as well. Who's behind all of this? Who actually ran the event? Here's the trademark registration for Social Gloves. The owner is listed as Ace Hat Collection. That sounds eerily similar to the Ace family, Austin's YouTube channel name. Here is Ace Hat Collection, Inks, Filing, and look who the director is. It's Austin McBroom. Whoever the original internet detective was deserves credit for finding this scoop because it makes you wonder about the entire event. Given that this was newsworthy when it came out, I think it's fair to assume that no one knew Austin was at least part owner of the event. He's the biggest payout earner and owns the event. Sounds like a conflict of interest to me, and the fact that it wasn't disclosed means there may be more to the story. So with the $1 million bet and all the other promises contractually made to the boxers and live event company, Austin literally won $1 million at his own damn event. No one really knows, bro. I got so much pressure on me, dog. Like, with everything I do, this shit's way bigger than anyone can ever imagine for me, bro. Like, the shit that I've done for, like, my family and shit, bro. Like, so I'm telling you, the the dustometer is about, is about to break. And I'd be willing to bet, pun intended, I'd be willing to bet that Austin never disclosed to Bryce Hall or the other fighters that it was his company, like, running everything. So when the time came to not paying them, and bitch, that time came, Austin can claim, oh, like it's the entire other company's fault, not mine. I mean, he literally staged his own fake paparazzi press conference in order to say this. Right, everyone thinks that Social Gloves just did everything. No, Social Gloves partnered with LiveX Live, who live streamed it and collected everybody's money, right? So the reason why the fighters haven't got paid yet is because LiveX Live has been holding on to all the funds. They have not paid Social Gloves one penny. And that's why Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live. And in an interview with Live X Live, he had this to say about Austin. Here's the crazy part of this, right? And I apologize, I left this out. Austin was telling Bryce and telling Taylor that he didn't know any of the numbers. He was getting the numbers every day. And as it got close to the fight, he wasn't getting it every day. He was getting it every hour. And as we got to the last couple of days, he was getting it every 15 minutes. So as I mentioned, Austin and his company, Social Gloves, are now being sued by LiveX Live for $100 million in damages. Like, But one key detail I thought was particularly stank was this. So in addition to Austin promising Bryce a $5 million payout, he also has it in a contract with LiveX Live that Bryce would get priority payment after NBA player James Harden, who for some reason invested $2 million into this, would get paid first. For example, SGP entered into an agreement with Bryce Hall Biz LLC for the services of Bryce Hall as a fighter at the event. SGP and Bryce Hall Biz represented to LiveX Live that Bryce Hall Biz had priority for payment subordinate only to the financier of the event, James Harden. Unbeknownst to LiveX Live and Bryce Hall Biz, two weeks before it entered into its agreement with Bryce Hall Biz, SGP entered into a similar agreement with Taylor Holder LLC for the services of Taylor Holder as a fighter. That agreement likewise granted priority to Taylor Holder on terms which appear equivalent to the rights granted to Bryce Hall Biz. This story has so many angles to it. Where did James Harden come from? But according to the LiveX Live lawsuit, unbeknownst to LiveX Live, Austin did a side deal with Taylor Holder for the exact same thing. On top of that, Austin even required the fighters to sign an NDA before signing them to first position, including himself, which as far as the CEO is concerned, is fraud. Austin got all the fighters to sign an NDA, then sign many of them to a first position. And when you sign to a first position, you legally cannot sign a second person to a first position, right? Is it fraud? Is it breach of contract? Is it worse? But it's been reported that fighters had no clue the earnings were going to be so much lower than anticipated. Part of this is because Austin's massive stupid f ego prevented him from being realistic about the sales. So Austin promised Bryce first payment, but then he promised Taylor first payment and had them all sign NDA so they couldn't talk about it with anyone. Like Austin, boo, honey, buttercup. How are you gonna promise two people they gonna get paid first? <laughs> so needless to say, Austin has not paid the fighters or made good on his contracts with Live X Live, who as a result of facing significant and potentially catastrophic financial ruin from work with Austin, fun. LiveX Live is holding the funds in a trust until the legal like all gets sorted. Social Gloves is bankrupt, which is cap. It's false, it's not true. Everyone that was at the event knows that there was probably like 20,000 people there just at the gate alone 
we probably made three or four million dollars. So just Damn. that, we're not even talking about pay-per-view numbers. We're not talking Damn. about we're not talking about brand deals. We're just talking about at the event. Keep going. So social gloves is not bankrupt at all. Keep going. Okay. The okay. second thing is saying that fighters did not get paid. Mm -hmm. Yes, fighters have not got paid yet, including myself. But that is because Live X Live has been holding on to all the funds. They have not paid social gloves one penny because honestly, like who the hell would pay Austin and trust him to do the right thing and not just pocket the money and like bankrupt his company and move on. And like, actually, you know what? I actually reached out to Austin on this whole issue. Yes, this happened. And, and he actually responded to me with this to say. <laughs> Excellent, good, good, let's continue. The thing is, and what we're gonna see as a pattern over and over with Austin and Catherine is they have a very predictable business strategy. It's broken promises, shitty products, and take everyone's money and run. I mean, allegedly. There are just so many lawsuits against the McBrooms and their companies and so many accusations that look very viable that this is a habit for them. Like they create a crap product, whether it's an app to scam fans or a fake charity event or this boxing thing and take as much money up front, blame everyone else when it all crumbles, and then threaten to file bankruptcy. And I 100% expect them to file bankruptcy for social gloves so that they never have to pay these fighters. Like, and you know, to make matters worse, if that's even possible at this point, like even Tana Mojo tweeted about it. Like, bitch, <laughs> listen, Austin, honey, listen, why, why don't you bring it in? It's okay, Austin. You can you come a little closer. It's okay, honey. Bring it in. Bring it in. Okay, that's close enough. Listen, Austin. If you're involved in something that's so messy that Tana Mojo brushes her dusty ass self off to tweet about your mess, you done f up. I just, I don't know what else to say at this point. So Tana tweeted, not Austin McBroom owning most of social gloves and then everyone being surprised people aren't getting paid. To which Austin, in the saltine glory of his Swiffer duster ass dustiness, responded with this, not the most desperate human being speaking on sh she doesn't know about. Don't try and bring me or the event down to make you feel better about TanaCon. Every fighter, including myself, will be getting paid and a lawsuit is happening and that's not with social gloves dumb 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 I d did he really it's a choice have y'all noticed like influencers keep tweeting like so much now it feels like about how they're like suing someone like is that the new flex like oh lawsuits are happening okay bitch moving on so in the court documents live x live disclosed that there were in fact only 136,000 pay-per-view purchases which was well below the 500,000 they anticipated and not even in the same stratosphere as the 2.2 million pay-per-view purchases Austin promised when making the deal. So perhaps my new favorite thing about all of this was Austin's post on his Instagram stories where he straight up lies allegedly, about the pay-per-view purchase numbers and said 100,000 PPV buys is cap. Only the haters want to believe that. Yeah, I guess the actual sales records and court documents are all a bunch of haters. Ew. If anything, these people who are scamming, which isn't social gloves, are basically saying all of us fighters fan bases ain't shit. No, honey. These people who are scamming aren't saying that. Your fans are saying you ain't shit. Like, that's why they didn't pay $50 for your event that was just uploaded to YouTube like an hour later. We all know that Social Gloves put on one of the biggest social media events <laughs> in I'm sorry y'all, I just, I can't read any more of this. A bitch has reached her quota. This is just, let's move on. Hot I wanted to be famous, and I still don't see myself as famous. Um, okay, things are about to get even more intense, but real quick, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Iaso, which has been a tremendous help in my own healing, and something I think many, many of you can benefit from. So, most of you know that I live with fibromyalgia, which is a chronic widespread pain disorder. On top of that, I have sustained a neck and spine injury. I try and use safer non-evasive treatments and Iaso has been fantastic for me. Iaso is the first wearable 
rechargeable device with cold laser self therapy that I can use at home anytime I need it. Cold laser therapy is an FDA approved treatment that uses low levels of light to stimulate healing. So this is essentially working to increase cell metabolism and rebuild damaged cells and can be used to help treat injuries, relieving pain and muscle spasms, foot problems, arthritis, joint pain, carpal tunnel. So it comes in sleek packaging, has a charging dock, has a wristband for like easily treating wrist ailments, a super small carrying case and sticky pads to stick it directly to other areas like your neck, your back, knee, shoulder. And it also is the only hands-free wearable product sold in the US. So the first setting is just going to give you that light heat. If you tap it twice, it gives you vibrations. And then if you tap it a third time, it gives you pulsating vibrations. Now my doctors have used cold laser on me for years in office. So being able to do it at home has been a huge blessing for me. And y'all know there's no way I would talk about a pain treatment option if it wasn't something that I was using myself. I'll use it for like three times a day for 30 minutes like while I'm working and I do get some noticeable pain relief. So click the link in the description and check out Iyasu and see if it's right for you. I think this could really help some of you and I just want to wish you nothing but healing. I need to take a moment and tell you how excited I am about this nude color. I think this might, I don't know, this might be one of my favorite. I mean, I love them all, but like, I'm just living for a nude moment right now. Bitch, we got the nude, we got the nude hat too. Okay, let's just have a whole little matching set real quick. Now, we gotta talk about the mansion foreclosure, which is literally happening right now. And, and first of all, before I go down this dreary road, like, I'm not making light of someone potentially losing their home, but you know, we will talk about people with a long history of alleged scamming and fraud and excessive flaunting of their wealth to flex on everyone, not paying their bills and facing the consequences. So, so in May of 2019, Austin and Catherine bought a house, well actually two houses next to each other, then combined them into what one would call like a mega mansion. And they paid a reported $10.1 million and spent even more on construction. So the home is estimated at over 15,000 square feet of living space on a two acre property with 10 plus bedrooms and 15 bathrooms. 15 bathrooms. Like you could literally use a new bathroom every day for over two weeks before having to go back to the first one. <laughs> now in May of 2021, rumors of the McBrooms being behind on their mortgage payments started swirling. And according to multiple reports, the property has entered into a state of pre foreclosure, meaning that they had indeed defaulted on payments and needed to act quickly for this to not move into full on foreclosure. And this is well documented and confirmed by property records. In late May, the couple's lender filed a notice of default on the property, which is technically owned by a company called Ace Hat Collection. Child, here we go again with Ace Hat. Per the California Secretary of State, Catherine, whose legal name is Dolores McBroom, is Ace Hat Collection's president, while Austin is the company's vice president. And according to the financial website Investopedia, the term pre-foreclosure refers to the first phase of a legal proceeding that ultimately can conclude in a property being repossessed from a defaulted borrower. In a pre-foreclosure, the lender files a notice of default on the property because the borrowing owner exceeds the contractual terms for a delinquent payment. A notice of default informs the borrowing owner that the lender is pursuing legal action towards a foreclosure, which is basically just like legal ease for a bitch didn't pay them bills. <laughs> so it became more interesting, if not like all too predictable, when on July 7th, 2021, Austin denies everything while responding to the rumors and says this on an Instagram story. Stop capping on me and my family's name. Ain't nobody getting evicted. Ain't nobody moving. Stop believing everything you hear haters say on the internet. If we were moving, we definitely would have informed the world and made a video about it. Have a good rest of your day you have a good day too. But I also see that there is in fact a notice of default. So you definitely be missing some payments. And while in general, it would be pretty sh to cap on someone's family if they were in hard times, of course. I think exceptions are made for the parents when all they ever do is flaunt their wealth and clout chase and lie to their fans and use their kids for profit. 
allegedly. Now Austin did choose his words carefully here. Like technically at this point, they are not getting evicted and so they are not moving. It's just a formal notice of missed payments and the first legal action towards foreclosure. And Catherine also chimed in on July 19th. It's been such a blessing. All the false narratives and untrue rumors have been a blessing in disguise. They made me appreciate how blessed I am and get closer to God. I feel so alive. Blessed, 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 blessed. Honey, you know, did Nile is a river in Egypt, so I hear. But this is their pattern, right? Like it's also come out that their previous landlord is suing them for $65,000 for missing payments as they stopped paying on their reported $7,000 a month rent and broke their lease. I just like, they just seem like vultures to me. Now Catherine addressed the current foreclosure again in early October and cited the pandemic as a reason for some of what's happening. And while it's true, we are in a pandemic Pandemic, they don't seem to be the ones most affected by it, except that they were able to secure a $108,000 PPP loan, Payment Protection Program loan. Now, remember, a PPP loan is actually a forgivable loan, meaning it's not really a loan, like you don't have to pay it back. And technically they could default on their home payments because of the temporary eviction moratorium in LA County. So now let's look at that PPP for a second. So. Payroll, $81,249. Oh, okay. Who is that going to? Oh, let's see what it says here. Self-employed individuals, right. So they filed and got a free $108,000, which is meant to pay employees who would otherwise be out of work. And they got it to pay themselves while clearly still able and working because their job is to vlog their family at home. Like they literally got the government to pay them $108,000 to vlog. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I need to point this out, but the PPP loan was intended for struggling businesses who were at risk of losing their entire business, like restaurants who weren't allowed to be open during quarantine. Not self-proclaimed zillionaire family vloggers. I mean, you know, I know they're super destitute and all because poor little Elle had to go to school this week in daddy's Lamborghini while mommy followed behind in one of their other luxury vehicles. Goals. I mean, can you imagine having to go to school in the Lambo instead of the Bentley? Oh, life is just so unfair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but for real though, not only do they routinely flaunt their wealth and pay for expensive mommy makeovers, which do you boo, and buy like the latest $500,000 car and, and have nannies and live in at-home chefs and were worth an estimated $22 million in the pandemic year, but they didn't pay their mortgage. And now they're taking forgivable loans that small businesses couldn't even get. Well, you know, technically, I don't know if they spent that $20,000 on the property tax or mortgage, but it's seems like they kept missing payments because they were blessed with a notice of an auction of their house to take place on October 19th, 2021. And on that date, nobody bid on it. Like nobody. <laughs> so what happens? The property goes back to the bank or lender who gave the loan, which is Five Arch Funding Corporation. But the McBrooms are technically still living there. Although the house is currently not owned by that company, due to California's non-judicial foreclosure law, Five Arch Funding Corporation has to file and win an eviction lawsuit against the McBrooms if they want to force them to leave the property. The McBrooms can evade eviction by voluntarily leaving or resolving their debt to the Company. So I guess they'll be squatting there while they avoid their legal troubles because of the pandemic in Los Angeles They have currently extended the eviction moratorium until January 2022. So yeah, they can keep squatting if they want <sighs> So let's summarize a few things now Remember what I said at the beginning about the ace family having a specific pattern of launch scam deny blame complain ignore repeat So they basically appear to launch a new venture whether it's a product app buy a home or live event then it Inevitably, when something goes wrong with the money to which they get called out for it online, they first deny any problems and typically in their denial, they shift all the blame onto the end user, usually their audience or some other company involved. It's like all they eat for lunch is scam salad with denial dressing and a side of bitch bacon and crusty ass croutons, but I digress, I'm being petty. Back to the pattern. So after the denial comes the complaining. Austin in particular, prefer
prefers to do this like a sour man-child, mocking, belittling, and whining about whoever is calling them out. This is followed by more online criticism and reporting to which they then retreat back, ignore it while trying to silence accusers, followed by swiftly announcing some new charity event or fan giveaway, aka another likely scam. Lather, rinse, repeat, bitch. It's just all a pattern. Okay, y'all, I was I was gonna get into the whole child exploitation part of the Ace family, but I don't want this dog to be like super long, so I will include that in the Austin McBroom doc. If you guys want to see that, leave me a comment. And be sure to grab your very own official Pet University apparel right now, honey. You are going to love it. So tap the link in the description. I am so beyond excited for you all to see it and wear it. And again, just thank you so, so much like with all of my little weird heart for your support. This is really a dream come true for me and I just hope that we all channel our inner petty and look mad cute while we doing it, okay? <laughs> And please make sure to share with me your cute Petty University outfit so I can post you on my Instagram and Twitter and feature you in the upcoming docs. And as far as the Ace family goes, at the end of the day, it's like I always say, right? Like we decide with our views and clicks who has platforms and the big platforms. And if we don't continue to watch the problematic content, then they don't have a platform to be problematic on. But you know what? Y'all already got this. See you at Petty University. <clears throat> Class dismissed. Swoo!